Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video we are going to be going over setting up your Crossfire Wi-Fi. And if you don't know what that is, you are in for a treat. Crossfire is an entire ecosystem. When you're talking about using your TBS Unify, which communicates to your TBS Fusion, which you have on your drone, which bears a Crossfire Nano RX, which communicates with your Crossfire TX, and all this stuff just works together and your drone flies amazing, you've got no latency, you've got great video, and life is just good, and you love some Crossfire, then you are gonna like this video, because in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up Wi-Fi. And if you have all these things, and you're not using Wi-Fi, you are extremely, extremely missing out. There are so many features that are happening right now. They're not fully out yet. Well, at least all of them, because we know a lot more is to come. But the ones that are out right now, why are you not taking advantage of that? Let's go, pilots. Woo! Uh, uh. Alright pilots, so in order to get this set up, we've got to do two things. I mean, there's some little things that are inside of those two main things, but we need to get the two main things done. The first one is we need to get Wi-Fi set up on our Fusion. The second thing is we need to get Wi-Fi set up on our TX. Once we've got both of those set up, the system just works. You've got the TX Lite, you've got the Micro TX, and then you've got the Tango 2. If you've got any of those type of setups for your radio, then you definitely have a Wi-Fi module. If you do not have one of the three that I just named, then that means that you have the Crossfire TX, and that is the full-size version. If you have that version, there is a possibility that you do not have a Wi-Fi module inside of that unit. Now, you will need to get yourself the JR adapter. I will put a link down in the video description with that adapter. All right, pod, so the first thing we need to do to get rolling is we need to go ahead and open up the TBS Agent X. If you don't have that, you'll need to download it. If you don't know where to download it, I actually have a video on how to set up Crossfire Shot, and in that video, I show you how to download the TBS Agent X. It's very simple. You'll see here that I have a new update. I will click OK, and we'll continue on. Here is where you will create a login. If you have a login, just log in. If you don't have a login, register for a login. Now, if you don't want this or you are uninterested in giving them your email and creating a password and doing all of that secret stuff that they might steal your identity, you can just come up to the top right corner and click skip. No big deal. I'm actually rocking the brand new Crossfire Micro TX2. If you ain't got that, get that, bruh. All right, so let's go ahead and connect that to the computer. You are going to need a USB type C if you have the new one. If you have the old one, then you just use a regular micro USB. Welcome to Open TX. All right, power on your radio and plug in your Good TX. Morning. All right, so you should have a light in the back letting you know it's got power. And let's go ahead and plug in. Oh. There we go. So as soon as I plug my TX in, right away, this stuff popped right up. I have my Crossfire Micro TX right here, and I've got my Crossfire Wi-Fi right here. If you're wondering why I show two of these, it's because this is a different one, and I haven't seen it for two months. Okay, so what we need to do now is let's go ahead and connect to the Crossfire Micro TX. I'm going to go ahead and click Manage. And once I get in here, I need to get my firmware up. It needs to be 3.2.4 or greater. Fortunately for me, I have 3.74. That is brand new firmware. So I don't need to update my firmware. But I'm going to log in and take a look. Doesn't even show my current firmware. As far as your TBS Cloud goes, you need to have firmware 1.08 
or greater. All right, so now that you've got your firmware updated, you're either at a newer firmware or you're at 3.24, now you're ready for the next step. There is a link down in the video description. You need to go ahead and click that link. As soon as you click it, a browser is gonna open and a file is gonna begin to download. I'm gonna do that now. If you don't click it or it's not a link for you, just copy and paste it into a browser and it will begin a download. And immediately you can see that the file began to download. And what I do is I keep things nice, neat, and organized. So what I want you to do is go into your FPV folder. If you don't have an FPV folder, I recommend to create one. Once you're in there, you're going to need a folder called Crossfire. Once you have a Crossfire folder, you're all set. That is where you want to unzip your download. So I'm going to go ahead and find my download, and then I'm going to go ahead and open it and then I'm going to extract the files, and I'm not gonna just extract them to wherever they go. I'm gonna actually put them in a designated place, which is in my FPV folder, and then Crossfire folder. And now I'm gonna go ahead and extract them. Now that they've been extracted, we can head over to there. All right, so if we head over to our FPV folder and then we open up our Crossfire folder, you'll see that both of the files are here and they're ready to go. All right, so now that we've extracted our files, let's go ahead and click Manage on our TBS Cloud. And we want to confirm that it says online. If it says online here and your version is 1.08, then you're great. Now it's as simple as going down to the bottom right of your computer, open up your Wi-Fi, and you're going to see right here, we have a whole new Wi-Fi. It's TBS Crossfire's Wi-Fi. How cool. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on it, and then you want to connect your computer to it. There's no password, so don't worry about that. This could take a few seconds to connect, even possibly a minute. All right, looky here. We are connected. Okay, once you're connected, it's very simple. Pull back open your browser, and then you're going to want to go ahead and type this in. 192.168.4.0. And press enter once you do that you're gonna see that your computer's browser opens up something that says right on there crossfire Wi-Fi so now you'll go ahead and click choose file once you do that you're gonna head over to your documents FPV crossfire and now you can see why I keep everything in an organized place could you imagine trying to find that file right now that would suck once you do that, then you can head over to the version that you would like, and I'm going to go with the higher version, I mean obviously, and what we're going to do is we're going to select Crossfire, and then right here you're going to see firmware.bin. Go ahead and select that file and click Open. Once you've done that, then you'll want to go ahead and click Upgrade. All right, looky here, update success, and now it's rebooting. Do not interrupt the rebooting process. This could end badly for you. You do not want to tank this stuff. All right, so we're all set. It's done what it has to do. Now we are brought back to the same page, the Crossfire Wi-Fi page. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and select Wi-Fi, and this time we need to connect to a network. You need to use a separate network, so that's why we've got our phone handy. So go ahead and head over to your network and internet inside of your phone settings, and then what you'll do is you'll go ahead and head over to mobile, hotspot, and tethering. I don't know what kind of phone you have, but based on what type of phone you have, you need to go ahead and turn on your hotspot. You might struggle with your computer trying to jump off of the TBS Crossfire Wi-Fi. That's okay. Just put it back on. It's not a big deal. Once you've got your hotspot turned on, go ahead and click on Wi-Fi, and then you want to go ahead and scan for networks. And what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and find your hotspot, and then at that point you can click it, and then you're going to enter your password. And press Enter and let the magic begin. Now to confirm and make sure, go ahead and click Wi-Fi, and then you'll see here, look right here, my current settings is TBS Crossfire, and I'm connected to Dream Man FPV. Now how awesome is that? So now that you're connected, if you wanna be sure and you wanna go ahead and check your work, go ahead down below, click on the TBS Agent X, and then look for your TBS Cloud Wi-Fi, click Manage, and then head down to your Wi-Fi client. And look at that. You'll see right here, it's telling us that we are connected to the Drain Man FPV Wi-Fi hotspot. 
There you go. Now you've got your Wi-Fi set up on your TX. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and do the same exact process, but for our TBS Fusion. Luckily, if you've been following along, you've already got the firmware. So let's go ahead and dive in and get her done. All right, so now we are on to the TBS Fusion. You're gonna go ahead and leave your Fusion plugged into your goggles. If you have not done the power mod, I don't know which goggles you have. Depending on which goggles you have, depending on which version you have, will decide as to whether your goggles are gonna put out enough power to power this guy and everything that it needs to do. If you want to know how to do that, I have a full video on how to modify your Fat Shark goggles. I am not on the hook for that. If you don't know how to solder and you don't know how to do it, don't do it. But if you do and you are comfortable, go ahead and watch that video. I'll put it down in the video description. It shows you how to do both power mods to make sure that your Fusion, Rapid Fire, anything that you decide to run on those goggles will be able to have enough power. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to go ahead and put your TBS Fusion into your goggles but you'll need to remove the case because we need to access the USB port. So now that I've got it inside the goggles, I'll go ahead and power it up first. Okay, there you go. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my computer's USB and I'm going to plug that into here. Go ahead and jump into your Agent X and what you'll see is you'll see your TBS Fusion pop up. And if you've been following along for this whole video, all of this is going to look familiar to you. And what you'll see here is our firmware is only 0.23. In order for this to work, we need 0.24 as a bare minimum. So let's go ahead and click Manage. And after we do that, we're going to head over to Firmware. And then we're going to, holy moly, I am behind. I'm going to head up to the Safest Fusion RX 1.01 version while staying away from beta. If you don't have the beta options but you are interested in them, there is a checkbox that you can check to allow for beta versions to pop up. I'm going to go ahead and click update now and then down at the bottom you'll see the little update and we'll just go ahead and let it do its thing. I'll be sure not to interrupt the power or the process while it's doing this. Alright, so now that you've updated your firmware, you're at the newest version possible or you are anywhere past the .24. Now what you need to do is go ahead and just power up your TBS Fusion just normal and we need to go ahead and get over to the settings and we need to make sure that our Wi-Fi is turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and press the center button. I'm going to head down to settings. Once I click on settings, then I'll head down to... You guessed it, Wi-Fi. Not sure if you can see that, but I showed it to you anyways. Once you click on Wi-Fi, you press it one time, and it turns to on. So after you've connected back to TBS Agent X, and you see here both that the cloud and the fusion are both responding, now you're ready to move on to the next step. If you did not follow the first set of steps, then you would not have the firmware that you need, and you would need to go back and do that step. Even if you have no interest in putting Wi-Fi on your Crossfire TX, you still need to do that so you can have the firmware. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on my Wi-Fi settings, and I'm going to make sure that I'm connected to the TBS Fusion Wi-Fi. If you are, great. If you're not, hit connect. After you've done that, now we're going to head back to that same website that we were at before. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in, and I'm going to press enter. And that brings you here to your TBS Fusion Wi-Fi page on the browser. Now I'm going to go ahead and click choose file, and I'm going to go back to that same place, but I'm not going to select the same exact file, because that file was for the Crossfire transmitter. So I'm going to go ahead and hit documents, then I'm going to go to F. PV, then I'm going to go to Crossfire, I'm going to go to the same version, but this time, instead of Crossfire, I'm going to select Fusion. Once I do that, you'll see the firmware.bin file, I'll select it, and then I'll hit Open. Once I've done that, now it's time to press Update. Make sure you don't interrupt it during this process. Once you have completed that, you'll know that your network has taken back over, and at that point, you can head down to Wi-Fi, and then go ahead and reconnect to the TBS Wi-Fi. Boom. Once you've done that, you'll head back to the Fusion Wi-Fi page, and now it will look like this. Then you're going to click Wi-Fi. Now that takes us back to that first step that we did, which was where we turned on our mobile hotspot. Make sure you go ahead and turn that on again. That is, if you've ever turned it off. If not, keep it rolling. And now what we'll do is we'll scan for that network. 
You'll see that it's found once again the Drain Man Network. It also found my net gear, but we don't want that. We're not interested in that. We are interested in Drain Man. I'll click on that, and now it's time to enter my password. All right, there you go. I went ahead and I reloaded it. And then as you can see right here, I am connected to the Drain Man Network. That is super awesome. Now, if I wanna go ahead and check my work, I can head down to the TBS Agent X, and then I'll come over here to the TBS Cloud. I'll click Manage, and then I'll head down to my Wi-Fi client. And sure enough, I am connected to the Drain Man FPV network. So now you are set up. You have all of your Wi-Fi's on, connected, and ready to roll. So if you were to set up a channel on your VTX, and then you were to go ahead and change that channel, you can set this so that your Fusion will automatically follow that. I don't know if you think that's cool, but I think that's cool. We've come a long way since the old school days where you had to manually press each and every freaking button. So this is super awesome. I am super excited about it. I hope that this video helped you guys get your Crossfire ecosystem running. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one. Oh.